Chapter 7 And it came to pass, when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in an house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me an house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me an house of cedar? Now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be a ruler over my people over Israel. And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Then went they, King David in, and sat down before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house, that thou hast brought me hitherto? And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God, but thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the manner of man, O Lord God? And what can David say more unto thee? For thou, Lord God, knowest thy servant. For thy word's sake, and according to thy own heart, hast thou done all these great things, to make thy servant know them. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself, and to make him a name, and to do for you great things and terrible, for thy land, before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, from the nations and their gods. For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever, and thou, Lord, art become their God. And now, O Lord God, the word which thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever, and do as thou hast said. And let thy name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel, and let the house of, the, of thy servant David be established before thee. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, hast revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee an house. Therefore hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. And now, O Lord God, o Lord God thou art that God, and thy words be true, and thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee. For thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it, and with thy blessing, let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. One thing that is accounted to David for righteousness is his desire to build a temple which is meant to house the Ark of the Covenant. And he asks Nathan, or basically tells Nathan, now that he's got a house of cedar, uh, <clears throat> which is meant to be a description of an extremely royal palace, a very fine house. He would like to do something for the Ark of the Covenant, which has been away from it, even from the own, its own tabernacle for the last 20 years. 
And Nathan tells him, well, you know, do what seems you good. But you also need to remember that the tabernacle had been put up in Shiloh and had been there almost 300 years. And there are very few portable buildings that are basically a, uh, a curtain and a tent and made out of fabric, you know, there's animal skins or anything that's woven that after 300 years is going to look great or be in the best of shape. And so it was time. And David, to his, for his righteousness, was thinking of doing something good. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get a chance to do it. There are two major issues in this chapter. The first one was, why was David not allowed to build the temple? Uh, to house the Ark of the Covenant. And number two, the promise in chapter, in, sorry, chapter 7, verse 16, that David's house would last for, be established forever. And we see early on that uh, Nathan, who is the prophet of God, recognizes that David has been doing good things, and is a righteous individual and tells David, you know, do as seem good, the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord appears to Nathan and lets him know that, no, it isn't David who's supposed to build the temple. It will actually be his successor that will build it. And later on, uh, in one of the subsequent chapters, as David is talking to Solomon, he tells us that the reason, he gives us a reason, um, we assumed that was because the Lord gave him the reason, but at the time of it happening, he didn't get it. That because he had seen so much war and bloodshed and killing, the Lord had not authorized him to build a holy temple, which means something very significant. If you are uh, an individual who is involved in a lot of war and death, etc., there are a lot of things that maybe you might be disqualified to do. It's sort of an interesting concept to a lot of people who dissociate, who don't connect their behavior, their attitudes, their experience with righteousness. And the Lord obviously has a different standard than most people. The second thing was, was David's line established forever? Now, we see that there was King David, and then we see that there was Solomon, but obviously, at the time of the Savior, just to pick a point down the road, where Jesus was a descendant of David, Jesus was not the king. Now, Rome was ruler of Jerusalem, all Israel, and their king was an emperor in Rome. But if the kings who had the inherited right to rule the Davidic line because of the genealogies that are there we know that Joseph the carpenter would have been the king of all Israel and his successor would have been Jesus the Christ now obviously at any one time there's a, there's a messianic component to this because the Lord promised David something that in fact did happen, but it happened messianically instead of just physically, in that there can only be one person who is the head of the house of David at any one time. And that one person on an eternal basis was Jesus the Christ. And so we're having both a messianic prophecy, a dualistic prophecy, one that is both messianic and physical at the same time. And obviously the physical is going to be limited, but the one that deals with the coming of the Savior and his right to rule and reign isn't limited by any stretch of the imagination. So this is an, this is an interesting thing that we see.